first great mystery of the Christian faith we have already mentioned is the Incarnation, God becoming man for our salvation. But this great truth cannot be rightly understood separated from another truth. Together they form the foundation of the Christian faith. This is the mystery of the Trinity. When we speak of mystery, by the way, we do not mean that we cannot know anything at all, but that we can know something, a something that will be quite important, but we will not necessarily be able to know everything. We should not be surprised at this since we are dealing with God who is infinitely greater than our minds can comprehend. This does not mean that such mysteries are unreasonable. No, they do not contradict reason, but go beyond the limits of reason to a level of knowledge called faith. While God, unchanging from all eternity, was always the Trinity in himself, he did not reveal this truth about himself to us at once from the beginning. It is really only with Jesus that we are given a clear understanding, a clarity that aids in understanding certain Old Testament passages in light of the doctrine of the Trinity. From the way Jesus talked about himself, the Father and the Holy Spirit, early Christians began to understand this truth of the Trinity. The Father is God, the Son, Jesus, is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. Each of these three are not the other, yet there is only one God. How are they to understand this? A succinct way of describing this data is that God is three persons in one divine nature. This, of course, is meaningless if we don't know what the terms mean. By nature is meant that which makes something the kind of thing that it is. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit each have exactly the same nature that makes them that transcendent reality that they are. Thus they are unified and truly only one God. Person helps to bring out that each are really distinct, though not separate, in their relationship to each other. I would like to write so much more to make this clear, but I realize that I cannot in this single audience. Instead of dwelling too much on this more philosophical description, though very important, I want to put this in the language of love, of self-gift, that I have used before. God in his innermost being is a dynamic exchange of self-giving love. For all eternity, the Father loves the Son, giving his whole self to him. In perfect reciprocity, the Son returns this love to the Father. And the infinite, dynamic, self-giving relationship of love between them is so real that it is another person, the Holy Spirit. God acts with love toward us first because such love is part of his very being, his very divine life. Love can only occur between persons who are free to give themselves to the other. Thus, we see here that God is not simply some kind of force exterior to us or some far-off entity that has nothing to do with us. No, his very nature is loving relationship, first within his own life and second flowing out to us. What an impact this truth has for us. We can certainly relate to God simply as God. But more importantly, we can relate personally to each of the three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We must ask ourselves, do I simply know God vaguely? Or do I know? Do I speak to and listen to? Am I in relationship with each of the divine persons? If he does seem far away, try asking him to help you come to know him as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.